So 1 over 48. Is that okay? 1 over 48. 1 over 48. F at 64 is 4. That was why we chose 64 in the first place. So we could compute the cube group. We knew we had to do that. We need to know F and A. Okay, now we just put the pieces together. <coughs> so L of X, our linear approximator, is going to be F at A, so 4, plus derivative at A, 148, times X minus A, so X minus 64. Was the point taken the derivative It is a prime other problem. I mean F prime at A. And then I put A into it. I just didn't do it all at once. That's all. Okay, so if we write this in slope intercept form, we'll get 4 plus 48 times X minus, what's 64 over 48? You reduce that fraction, 64 over 48. What is it? 4 thirds? 4 thirds. Four thirds? Thank you. Four thirds. What is four thirds? So that's going to end up looking like a 48th of x. What's four minus four thirds? Four minus four thirds. Eight thirds? Uh, yeah, eight thirds, eight thirds. We'll go with Baker. Eight thirds. Okay, so there's L of x. In slope intercept form. All right, so if I want to know an approximate to the, no, get, no matter what you do, you're getting an approximate to cube root 65, right? Anything you ever come up with is always an approximate, so that number doesn't really exist. So cube root 65, um, we'll just plug in what into here? 65? So L of 65 now is a simple linear transaction, right? All you got to do is find out where it lies on this line. So you have 148 times 65 plus 8 thirds. 65 and 48 have any common factors? 65 and 48. Um, what is the prime factorization of 65? 5 and 13? No, it's 5. So 48 doesn't have 5 or 13 in it, right? So we're stuck with this 48 down here. So 65 over 48 plus 8 over 3, but I wanted to read a 48, so 3 times 12, we just had a 16, It's right? 193 over 48. 193? Mm -hmm. 193 over 48? Yep. Alright, there's our approximation. Doesn't matter, Raja. Can I read with cube root 65 plus 8 over 48? What do you think we're going to get? So what's this decimal? How does it look? 48 goes to 193 how many times? What? 4.02? Repeating? What does it start repeating? Uh, 208. 208? What's the repeating part? It's all threes out of that? What's the actual value of cube root 65? Or what's what's the approximate the calculator gives you? 4.02072575. Okay. Done. Very good. That's linear. That's not even moving to higher polynomials, right? Pretty good. So why is it so good? Nature of cube. Nature of these nature of root functions in general, right? The higher the root, the higher the index, the flatter the curve is. Right? So your tangent lines are really close to the curve. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? Right. What's the what's the square root look like? Square root's already like this. And then cube root knocks it down, right? Cube root knocks it down even further. And then the fourth root knocks it down even further, right? So they're, they're getting flatter and flatter. The concavity is getting less and less. So the higher the root, the better your approximate is going to be, for the most part, right? Yeah. Yeah, 
fix everything. Yeah. Carter knows what I'm saying. Me too. <laughs> All right. Are we now? I can do the the error thing. Did it say do the error or just say uh, sure. compute? It said choose a value. Choose a small error. I must have did a good job, right? So the answer was four point zero two eighty three. Yeah. Okay. We didn't see how many decimal places. Any questions so far? No. It's a good problem. <laughs> Okay, next thing to do with approximating. Same session. One more idea here. This is, <coughs> we know that the derivative is the limit of f of x plus some delta x minus f of x over delta x. Delta x goes to zero. That is the very definition of derivative, correct? Now, usually we see with an h. Usually, I'm using delta x here for a particular reason. So usually, in place of delta x, we have an h, but there's really no difference. That's all h is in those equations, in those, uh, that definition of derivative, is just some change in x, that's all. It's the difference between x and a. All right. <coughs> this part up here is nothing other than delta y for this particular delta x. It's a change in the, the heights of the function. Agreed? It's f a little further along minus the f at x. Well, that's just a change in height. That's all it is. So we could write a more concise notation, and there is a reason in one second. The limit as the change in x goes to zero of delta y over delta x. This is exact, right? That is what it means to be a derivative. And now we want to approximate things. So if we take off the limit as delta x goes to zero, making this imprecise, which means approximating, we'll get that f prime at x is approximately equal to some change in y over change in x. Now, the one caveat is it's a good approximator for small changes in x, just like before, small delta x. Right? That's when this is useful. Like a second ago, our linear approximator was only good for 65, because 65 is close to 64. If it asked us about 1,058, we would not have used what we used. So this now leads to, <coughs> I multiply both sides by delta x, because it is a finite quantity now, right? This is just approximate, there's no limit here. It's not empty, it has to be small. This is a finite value. So you multiply both sides by delta x, and you get that a change in y in your function, right? Change in the function values is approximately equal to the derivative times the change in the x values. It's really the same idea we just talked about. We're just using more precise notation and make it more widely applicable. So <clears throat> to use this, we'll, we'll start at number 23. Just so you know, the real difference between this and what we just did, there's not much. The real difference is you are now trying to find an approximate for how much the function has changed. 